It is our responsibility as a BLM to respond to this request, including evaluating whether the request is compatible with our field office's resource management plan, evaluating the location of the project, the potential impacts, both positive and negative, and ensure that the project is constructed in a manner that follows BLM regulations and prevents or lessens the impact to the human environment, including minimizing impacts to the cultural, historic, and natural resources. Thank you. She is Tahasik. It's one of the uh, the next scientific words that any time that traditionally that you're going to address the audience, you start out with she is Tahasik, meaning that you are in connection with your environment, your surrounding. The existing infrastructure that we have out there will not necessarily adequately handle the crude oil transportation. A lot of it is aging. It's uh, 30 to 50, maybe in some cases 60 years old. About 47% of this project is on private lands. The BLM portion is about 26%. Navajo allotted, roughly about 15%. The state of New Mexico lands, roughly 8%. Navajo Nation fee, roughly about 4%. The outlet pipeline is going to run roughly from Lybrook all the way down to either Milan or Pruitt to a rail facility where it again be stored and will be able to be loaded onto rail cars, which will then transport it to other destinations. BLM has not at all <gasps> provided a list of critical areas or areas that are significant culturally from the Pueblos and from the Navajo Nation, the Hickorya, and the Ute. And that really concerns me. The information provided does not address the risk of an accident and the impact on communities and the environment, our Mother Earth. Bureau of Land Management has approved over 100 permits to drill without notifying the public. Each Pueblo tribe and indigenous people led nonprofit organizations on this application for permit to drill. In October, I received a uh, notice that this office was about to sell 20,000 acres of the Santa Fe National Forest to oil companies for fracking that morning. The oil industry was promoting an entirely new endeavor, the fracking of the Mancos Shale in the San Juan Basin, and that a major new pipeline was planned, the Pinon Pipeline. Some of the projects were already being carried out, even though there has not been the legally required public planning process and comparing of alternatives. BLM lands are public lands, decision about their use, you need to be in the best interest of the public with public input and participation. Same goes for tribal lands. I'm a little concerned at the rapidity with which BLM has uh, gone toward the environmental assessment phase. The areas that are going to be impacted here could easily, under BLM's own criteria, be considered parts of an ACEC, an area of critical environmental concern. I'm from Pueblo Pantaro, uh, right here in the center. The Chaco Mesa is my home. Pueblo Pantaro, that's my school. There are some springs that come out of the canyon walls underground. The morning doves, they fly into those little canyons, get their water. This pipeline has been estimated that it could potentially quadruple the amount of drilling and fracking that occurs in the San Juan Basin. And in 2012 alone, created three billion gallons of toxic wastewater. So we're talking about a million something gallons per frack, but we're not talking about the fact that when the fracking fluid enters an aquifer, that aquifer is gone. And the people here from the Navajo Nation know that with uranium. Mobile Oil, Exxon Mobil, Texaco have had to pay a combined eight and a half million dollars here during the last decade for pollution violations, including dozens of spills that reach the tributaries of the San Juan River, the region's lifeblood. Fracking produces fissures that allow chemicals to migrate into water sources, chemicals whose names we are prohibited from knowing due to the Halliburton loophole of 2005 that exempts the fracking industry from provisions of 
the Safe Water Drinking Act, the Clean Air Act, the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act. From cultural resources to endangered species to lost opportunity costs, most importantly, the continuing subjugation of the Diné and other indigenous people is unacceptable. The new frontier out there is, it seems like it's totally unregulated. Um, there, all of this experimental technology and they're just going for it and the communities are being talked into it because they feel like they have no choice there. Their leadership is telling them that, you know, it's already a done deal and, and, you know, just go for it, go for the money. BLM is already admitted that while it is currently approving Manco shale wells, it has never analyzed the environmental impacts of horizontal drilling. So BLM does not know what the impacts of this kind of development will be. I am really wondering what the rush is. What is the hurry here? How can the BLM justify an environmental assessment as opposed to more thorough and careful environmental impact statement? There are rare plant species along the proposed project, the pipeline. There are culturally significant plants that are proposed along the pipeline. BLM has to do a survey, feel, as far as what's out there. And this is the Brax cactus that's the state endangered cactus is only found in northwestern New Mexico. They flagged it out, left the flags here. And you get the situation where these unique resources are sort of sacrificed as part of the whole project. My grandfather, who drove me almost every day and walked me on the land to show me the, the plants, the animals, the sky, how to read the sky, how to read the stars, I can't do that now. When I go out there, there's frack flares. I'm a retired archaeologist. I did contract work in this area a lot. Feelings I have about Chaco Canyon, it's a World Heritage Site. There's only one. There will never be another one. We cannot do anything to disturb this. And the archaeology there is not just here. It's the whole area. Chaco was integrated with land and sky, geography, topography, and the roads especially express that. It's not a single site, it's not a great house here, a shrine there, it's the entire set of relationships. How do we look back and say what's of really deep value to us? The reason that many of us are here is we feel very violated that that fracking can take place on public land. The Four Corners area is a complete sacrifice zone. And we have to stop that. We have to turn that whole sacrifice zone mentality around in New Mexico. We can't let it keep going. However, I used to live in a rural area in the San Juan Basin on the San Juan River. One would expect that to be peaceful and tranquil. However, it was never quiet. That wasn't because I could hear the San Juan River. It was because I could hear the compressor station on the BLM land across the road. My neighbors lost cattle, their living, their income. Those cattle drank water that was contaminated by oil and gas. I'm a contractor. We talk to 10, 12 people a day explaining this project. We had numerous public meetings. Even with Saddleboot, we've been to all the chapters that have been named and more. We've explained to them the drilling process, what's the, what horizontal drilling does. We took core samples, we took maps. Yes, that's probably the NEPA process that you have to go through, but you can't do that out here. You need to give people more time to understand this project. There's a lot of technical information in there. You have to break it down for them. Because when you're consulting with the tribes, you're not just consulting with the government, you're consulting with the citizens within each of the chapter. You got to consider grazing, you have to consider cultural traditions. That area might seem desolate, barren, but that's what we Navajo people love about it. That's where we find peace and quiet. We love our earth, we love our environment, and we want to keep it that way. No to pipelines! Thank you! Our main concern today is not 
us, not you, not myself, but the generations that are yet to come. The mother is alive today, you know, she's listening to us right now beneath our feet. I know we stand on a strong foundation, but it's, it's crumbling away, you know. I'm pretty sure we all, we all hold these things sacred to some degree in our heart. How could I stand here and agree to something that tears it all apart, you know? So I am against this pipeline, and I say, do it the fracking, you know? No way. I'm for the pipeline because I would make my living. I pay my dues doing it, and that's my career. And I got a lot of relatives that live by there that I work with all the time. And we want this to go through. And that's why I'm here speaking behalf of my union in the one and only 798. All right, thank you. I have close to 30 credit years retirement many from these so-called temporary jobs. So to imply these skilled craftsmen would be better off working a permanent job at McDonald's is untrue and disrespectful. We have members throughout the Four Corners area and some members that uh, stand on the pipeline's proposed route. We kind of enforce environmental and pipeline safety uh, in interest of landowners and any concerned citizens. And with that in mind, the oil's already being drilled here. It's got to be moved. So the hurdle we have here is getting the truck traffic down and, and everything. The Bureau of Land Management may best be described as a small agency with a big mission to sustain the health, diversity, and productivity of America's public lands for the use and enjoyment of present and future generations. The Department of the Interior protects and manages the nation's natural resources and cultural heritage provides scientific and other information about these resources, and honors and trusts its responsibilities and special commitments to American Indians, Alaskan Natives, and affiliated island communities. With the proposed Pinion Pipeline traveling through sovereign Native territory and UNESCO World Heritage Sites, how are you protecting the nation's national and cultural resources? And the BLM is an organization of the government that's supposed to protect us. It's not here to protect oil and gas only. That's what it is doing. I think it's time to recognize this is the 21st century. There's 21st century solutions. And if we keep putting money into old technology, the money's not going to go into new technology that can really create a different future for all of us. There's a young man that says, this is a done deal already. The, the only reason the B, BLM came in is just to let us know. Well, that's very good to know. Why am I standing here talking? But you're going through a lot of reservation lands that does not belong to you to approve. We have young people walking. They started walking from Zishnao Tihli, and they're going to be walking to Mount Taylor. They're putting up awareness on this pipeline. They're putting up awareness on the fracking. These children, this little one especially, we need to care for them. <laughs> I respect them so much for doing what they're doing, sacrificing themselves like that. We're supposed to be nurturing our world, not violating it. That's not our job. It's a really devastating process to walk through this piece of land. We have walked 55 miles so far. The pipe is already laid down. Just like the young man said, it's a done deal, but it's not. All of these people that are here are here to say no. We're here to say no more. And for the gentleman that said that it's safe, you live there. You have that as your background. You drink the water that's there. You go, you go and tell the young people that had to deal with an oil spill why there's an oil spill. The ones that want to build and the ones that are saying no, we disagree, but we're all one. We're, we're, we're a family of this Mother Earth. If we disagree so much, why don't we sit at the table and discuss this and talk about it and disagree some more and disagree some more until we agree or compromise and come to some kind of conclusion? Public lands or an endowment to all of us and there fortunately we have a, a way through this controversy and this emotion and it's called the National Environmental Policy Act 
and ultimately, if you don't feel BLM has done a proper job, there's also a process of protest of that decision. And while it's a great challenge, it is multiple use, and one of those uses of the public lands is the supply of energy that supports our quality of life and provides for our national security. The oil and gas industry paid tens of millions of dollars to individual Navajo Lattes for the right to develop their private property. Right now, a lot of families right now are being divided just because of those checks. And who's getting the check? Who's written on that check? Whose name's written on it? A lot of the culture and tradition it's, um, is being overlooked just because of that money. Who I am as a Diné woman standing here and my life work is because of my upbring upbringing in that area. And it devastates me that this is gonna happen because I wanna bring my children home there to live there. But because of the pollution already and the proposed fracking, which goes and coincides with the pipeline, I'm not gonna bring my children there. And it kills me inside. A year ago, uh, my sister Laura, who just spoke, and I discovered that our families had been coerced into signing contracts. They had not been informed um, fully informed about at all about uh, the risks of living next to uh, fracking development. I heard someone say earlier, there is going to be impacts. There's already impacts. There are already over a hundred wells out there. Me and my siblings, we've got four allotments down by Pueblo Pintado. Federal Indian Minerals Management Office already had a predetermined price on the leasing on the allotments in this area. There was never any negotiation. For every dollar that they make, they leave 10 cents or less, probably about eight cents in New Mexico. They take another 92 cents and it goes out of the state. We met a nine-year-old and a 10-year-old little girl who said, oh, I know what you're talking about. They spill oil all the time. We got sent home from school at Zishna all different because there was a, a spill too our school. We were told last week we can't drink our water because the oil makes it taste bad. And the thing that is very important to remember is that this isn't just New Mexico. This is public land we're talking about. Everyone across the country has a say in how this is managed. So I encourage all of you to encourage all of your friends and family to comment on this, no matter where they live. Until that environmental analysis has been done, Guardians calls for a moratorium on all future approvals of oil and gas drilling in the Manco Shale area. All Sierra Club members would like to see this process stopped. They would like to see an EIS required on this pipeline. In addition, we propose to Bureau of Land Management to impose an moratorium on approving new leases and drilling permits targeting the SHAB until the uh, BLM upgrades its resource management plan to ensure that it has appropriate health and environmental safeguards in place. And it needs to be done in a cumulative way, not on a piece by piece basis. The San Juan Basin has already been scarred forever by the oil and gas industry. And it's time for us to take that step back and look at the full and complete impacts this is having. As Diné people, 150 years ago, our ancestors stared their extinction in the face. But guess what? We're still here, and we're staring our extinction in the face, and we're telling you no more. We don't want any pipelines in our territory. We're fighting for our land. We don't want any more coal mining in our territories. We don't want any more coal-fired power plants. It's devastating that we live in a methane plume. Clearly, what's already over is the era of easy pipelines. We are rising up everywhere. We are bold, resilient, strategic, resourceful, powerful. We are the climate justice movement, and we won't stop. <laughs>